Word association is a technique to kind of uncover the unconscious. So what I'm going to do is just spit a random word at you, and your job is to say the first word that comes to your mind. Or you can just think of it, obviously. Alright, the word is anime. Now, notice how you didn't fucking say funny. Why is that? Humor is entirely subjective. Something that's hilarious to me might not even get a chuckle from you, but I try to imagine what my face would be like if someone sent me funny flat chest moments in anime number two. I know I'd be pissed off and that'd probably f my whole day up, but I still don't know how I'd react. And that's the weird thing about anime. I feel like there's two sides of a fence, and if you're on one, you probably can't see the other, you know? Like, there's definitely an audience for funny walk into room at the wrong moments in anime number two, but that's just the side of the grass that I can't get into. My side is a little different. Yes. Asians have no souls, they're closer to robots or insects. But very, very rarely, I give a comedy-oriented anime a shot and find that it seamlessly blends into my sense of humor. Konosuba is about a nerdy kid who dies and is given a second chance in another world on the condition that he defeats the evil devil king. The world mirrors an MMORPG where you can gain skills, use magic, blah blah blah, you've heard it a thousand times. Only, Kazuma discovers his fantasy world is a lot more realistic than he'd like it to be. An incredible strength of Konosuba is subversion. How do most isekai start off? The main character dies saving someone, they respond with a super OP ability that basically alleviates all sense of danger, and they head over to the Adventurer's Guild. What happens to Kazuma is, he dies like a dipshit, he gets sent to another world with base basically nothing, and he's too poor to become an adventurer. The first episode sets the precedent for the rest of the series. This isn't going to be something that you've seen before, especially with our main character Kazuma. Now look at these women. Many things come to mind, namely great character design, but more importantly, I would like to slather these supple Chinese women with my western seed. You know who else does? Kazuma. And guess what? I don't freak out when I get the chance to, neither does Kazuma. Take your basic run-of-the-mill isekai main dude, invert all that, and you get a real person. Albeit exaggerated, but you get the deal. And that's why I've dubbed him the People's Champion. He doesn't speak for himself, no, but for the people. He gets caught busting nuts in the barn, he gets exposed for buying hookers, there's even an episode where he disses anime tropes. Isn't this the part where you get all embarrassed and say, we can't do that and politely let me go first? That's what you think. I don't conform to no slice-of-life storyline. He does dude stuff. This is where you get the idea of subversion, and Konosuba constantly trying to take you off guard. It doesn't stop there, let's look at all the characters. The show's main cast revolves around Kazuma and a group of girls that he adopts into his party. There's Aqua, a goddess, Megamine, the arch wizard, and Darkness, the holy crusader. They're, on paper, a near-perfect party. Megamine is even 13. But when brushed against the fact that the goddess has like three uses, the archmage can only cast a nuke spell, Darkness, the Holy Crusader is a sex fiend, and the only normal person in the series so far is an employee of the Devil King, it subverts your preconceived notions of how the party would behave. What you get is a bunch of weird personalities feeding off each other and causing genuinely funny interactions. The start of the show is definitely a little slow, but when the main cast settles in, there's a nice synergistic effect. You could say the cast is disjointed, yet cohesive. The characters develop chemistry with each other, so it's really nice seeing Kazuma and Megumi and the Weave hang out, or one of the characters actually remember little events from the last season and bring them up in an argument. Because because the characters aren't cringe, because Cosmo is relatable, and because the show is constantly challenging the tropes you've been trained to expect, the comedy almost always works. I was paying close attention and I laughed at least once every single episode. Now, there are definitely some stinky ass jokes, you know, the ones that just have you sitting emotionless like a fucking substitute teacher taking a role in a non-white classroom, but there's jokes like that in every one of my videos, so you should be fine. Why do we watch Isekai? Well, you're probably fat, uh, at least pretty stupid, let's be honest, just kidding, but Isekai is fun. You get to watch a dude live out a fantasy you've probably had before and surmount all sorts of mythical challenges and such, and it's still sort of present here. Kazuma and his party are super underpowered, so he has to come up with all sorts of tricks to beat boss level enemies, or even just little mobs. They go on quests, become stronger, collect tools, etc. It's satisfying, but if you're here for the action, I wouldn't recommend it. Let's talk OVAs. I don't watch OVAs, I have no idea why, but I was told the Konosuba ones were pretty good, and they were right. Both of them are pretty much But the main difference would have to be that the second season OVA sucked yucky scrotum while the first OVA was hilarious. The second one is just full of silence and it feels like an empty husk of an episode with the only redeeming quality being the ending while the first OVA is thoroughly enjoyable and fun. With the story out of the way, I want to talk about the production. I didn't realize while I was watching, but the soundtrack is extremely chill. There's tons of iconic and easily recognizable songs that are goofy and really set the mood, but if you actually wanted some substance, there's music that I could definitely listen to outside of the anime, including a beautiful and relaxing OST mix on YouTube 
which I dig for the most part. As far as dubs go, the dub for Konosuba is fantastic. They definitely put an effort to make the dub sound as natural as possible. At one point, the characters say poop head, they say lit and stuff like that. There's some really funny and natural sounding moments with the English voices. The sub also sounds phenomenal. The main difference in my perspective is that Cosma has this deadpan delivery that makes some of the jokes funnier, and Mega means explosion is incomparably better, but it's really up to you. Aqua has the same vibe, they nailed darkness. Whoa! Holy f fucking bug just flew in front of me. They nailed darkness, and I still want to rip this bitch's braid out every time she speaks. If I had to speak on the art, it's pretty good. There's some Sakuga stashes here and there, and it's pretty. Is that a spider? Ultimately, you should watch Konosuba if you haven't already. I feel like it's one of the easiest shows to get into. It's fun for newbies, it's definitely fun for veterans. Overall, I had a really fun time rewatching the show of my own free will, something I could only do for Space Dandy and Steins Gate. So if you're bored not doing anything, check it out, or rewatch the dub this time. There's two seasons and a movie that I heard is really good from a ton of people. If you're not getting a chuckle after about four-ish episodes, skip it. That's about it. Subscribe, or don't. I, I really don't care, you've already given me my watch time. Join me next week, or next next week, when I talk about whether a One Punch Man or Mob Psycho is better, then I think I'm going to sell out and hate myself for a week with another Monwa video. Thanks for watching. See ya.